Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today I have the 2025 MIT final question two. So why don't we just get into question? Well, this question looks scary, right? Mostly because of the floor function. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The key point of solving an integral involving floor functions is to find the interval at which the floor function is an integer. For example, the floor function, which is this, must be an integer, m, which ranges from 0 all the way to infinity. But to make this happen, we need the inside of the floor function, or 2 square root of x, to be greater than or equal to m and smaller than m plus 1. And note, here I'm using greater than or equal to, and here I'm just using less than. So, if I take square on both sides, then we see it will just be 4x is greater than or equal to m squared, which is less than m plus 1 squared. And now if we divide all sides by 4, then we'll see, we can just do this, this. But we can't just go in and replace these bounds with this, because this is only a super small interval compared to the interval from 0 to infinity. So to make up for all of that space, we need to add a sum. So we need to sum all the values from m ranging from 0 to infinity of the integral, and then we replace these bounds. So this integral will just become the sum when m ranges from 0 to infinity of the integral. This is the lower bound. And this is the upper bound. Okay, and the inside will of course just be, note that this is m. Now, although this integral looks hard, this is actually just a very simple reverse power rule. Negative x to the negative one. So this will just be, the sum when m ranges from 0 to infinity of the inside would just be negative this reciprocal and then ranging from 2 okay so now if we plug in these values for x, then we see it will just become so we see that this plugin for x is the negative and this plugin for x is the positive. So it's actually just equal to plug in this minus plug in this. So we're kind of doing it the opposite way. So we first Plug in this into x. And then we subtract, we plug in this into x. Okay, so now I'll rub everything out and we'll do some further simplifications. Okay, so now that we have this, it will be logical to just multiply the top and bottom by 4. So I can just change that. Same with this. Okay, so now we can rewrite this. So we see that m squared plus 4 plus 4m is just a perfect square. And it's the square m plus 2. 
then subtract this. If we unpack, then it will just be m squared plus 2m plus 1 plus 4 plus 4m. And now if I take the 4 out, and simplify this, which will be m squared plus 6m plus 5, and I believe you guys know how to factorize that. The inside will just be This will just be m plus 1 times m plus 5. Oh, sorry, this is 1. Okay, now that we have this, I'm going to split this into two different sigmas. Okay, so I'm first going to deal with this. So, of course, we can partial fraction this into 1 over m plus 1 minus 1 over m plus 5. And the question is, what will be the constant on the top? Well, lucky for us, the constant is exactly 4. So it cancels out with this. So this will be gone. And instead, we can replace this with the final partial fraction result. OK, so now that we have this, we see that this whole thing is actually just a telescoping series. So how, will I, how am I going to deal with this telescoping series? Well, I'm going to unpack the whole thing until I see some cancellations. So it will be, we start from m equals to 0. 1 over 1 minus 1 fifth plus 1 half minus 1 sixth plus 1 third minus 1 seventh plus a quarter minus 1 eighth plus one fifth minus one ninth. And now look, we have some cancellations, this and that. Great. So now that we see some cancellations, we can kind of obviously tell that this will cancel, this will cancel, this will cancel, this will cancel, and so on, so on. And we see that the only ones left is just one plus one half, plus one third, plus one fourth. That's all. And if you calculate this on your own, this plus this plus this plus this is just 25 over 12. So if I rub this out, then I can just replace this with 25 over 12. And now it's time for us to deal with this. Now, this might remind you of the zeta function. So this isn't exactly the zeta function, but we can make it. If we first let k to be m plus 2 squared, then this will just be 4 times the sigma when m goes from 0 to infinity of, we're not going to write this yet, there'll be a sigma, instead of m going from 0 to infinity, k will go from 2 to infinity. And this will just be 1 over k squared. And don't forget the minus 25 over 12. But although we have gotten closer to the zeta function, this isn't the zeta function, because the zeta function requires us to go from 1 to infinity but we're from 2 to infinity. Well, no worries. We can just make it into 1 to infinity. Equals to 4 times sigma k equals from 1 to infinity of this. But when we change from this to this, we also need to subtract 1. And then we just minus 25 over 12. And we know that this is just zeta of 2. And this is actually zeta of 2 because this power is 2. So, 
If you didn't know, the zeta of 2 is actually pi squared over 6. Okay, so you have this, and like I said, zeta of 2 is just pi squared over 6. So this is equal to 4 times pi squared over 6 will just be 2 over 3 pi squared minus 4 minus 25 over 12. And this is equal to 2 over 3 pi squared minus this minus that is actually just 73 over 12. So this is the final answer of the 2025 MIT Integration B final question 2. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you enjoy my video and you want more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.